welcome back to my channel after a gap today i am going to talk a very important and interesting topic this is about the role of meat in human health recently in our international conference i have presented a very advanced lead paper on this topic about the functional role of meat components and in human health and well-being but the same topic here i am presenting elaborately it will be presented in two part the part one i will discuss only about the basics and part two i will talk more deeper advanced aspects hope you enjoy this topic which gives a very details account about the role of meat in human health here is the content for the two lectures together of the whole topic but in this lecture i am going to cover the first four that is the basics about the life process disease and aging briefly as a background and then role of food and in life expectancy briefly i want to highlight and thirdly quick view on nutritive value so here i want to discuss about the basics of nutritive value of meat and how it is important as in our diet and fourth is health benefits of meat so here i will discuss the important health benefits of meat in a basic terminology and later in the remaining four i will discuss in a more deeper way how meat plays a much better role and not just food as a functional food and more details in the second lecture here i wish to highlight about the biological design of human being for eating meat there is always controversy whether we the human being should eat meat or not but here it says our digestive tract are designed to those found in other carnivores with long small intestines and short colons high concentrations of hydrochloric acid found in our guts is to break down protein from meat products a diet that included meat is a large part of what fueled the development of the human being so this part last part i am going to highlight again in the latter and the bottom line here is cells life is controlled by environment not by gene again it's a deeper statement which i cannot explain here maybe in some other lecture here i wish to highlight that the long long ago millions of years ago the monkeys started by chance eating fish and other animals and that is the turning point for the change of brain in the monkeys through which there is more changes and faster changes in the brain leading to the formation of neocortex and the arrival of the homo sapiens so our hominids ancestors have consumed meat for several million years that has been cited in many important references and here we can see important papers which proved that the arrival of the human species was mainly due to the consumption of these kind of animal proteins but especially the cholesterol and other fats which has played major role for the changes in the brain and the evolution of the human species that therefore the eating meat or animal flesh is not really wrong perhaps that is the reason for our arrival here i wish to mention that in the living process metabolism and production of energy is the essential requirement as long as there is life process there is need for energy and in fact the universe itself is full of energy as we know in the some law like newton's third law there is always a every action has got a equal and opposite reaction similarly in this process of producing energy it has got a equal and opposite reaction that is the production of other reactive oxygen species or free radicals that is what is harmful for health so the life process needs to handle and neutralize these free radicals which are harmful so biologically we have system to handle them by different kind of enzymes or we call them antioxidant system which prevents so we are going to talk more details on this and that is how meat also plays important role as antioxidants 
as i mentioned we have the antioxidant system to counter and neutralize the byproducts of oxidation that is the free radicals which causes damage degeneration aging and disease so to prevent that biologically we have the inherent endogenous antioxidant system like glutathione peroxidase superoxide dismutase and many other system catalase and similarly through food also we need to supply many antioxidants like vitamin a vitamin c vitamin e carotenoids and other things so here i wish to mention that the internal system and the external supply through the food both together only can work perfectly and give us the best defense against this oxidation or free radicals which is causing damage to the health so that's how the food becomes very important the quality of food and the source of food can play major role in supplying these antioxidants here briefly i wish to discuss about the theory of aging so as we live we have to have the uh, degeneration and disease and death that's the natural process and the causes of these are several factors including the environmental natural and internal and external many of the external pollution radiation toxic agents oncogenes cytokines oxidative stress all these thing leads to stress in the system of living biology and that lead to different signaling pathways involved there is cellular senescence and accumulation of senescent cells leading to aging now in this whole process one of the important thing is the reactive oxygen species or free radicals which i have mentioned and they can cause dna damage tissue damage cell organelle damage or protein cross linking chromatin modification so all this thing can cause cellular turnover mechanisms downwards and leading to different changes in the life process leading to aging or disease or death even so body has got mechanism to stop as i have mentioned in which the food has important role to support here i wish to highlight the life expectancy at birth some selected countries are here like india china pakistan usa uae uk canada new zealand switzerland and australia from this we can see that the life expectancy at birth is increasing with the affluence that means the richer or more developed is the country higher is the life expectancy at birth perhaps this is connected with the lifestyle and also the food habit etc which we are going to see in the next here we can see that life expectancy at birth has increased with time so it is showing for different continents average life expectancy from 1950 to 2020 and then projected up to 2050 here we can clearly see that the life expectancy at birth from 50 to 2050 or 20 it has continuously increased so perhaps this is directly correlated with the development with the times as the time has passed it has increased means there is more development and perhaps there is better food available for eating particularly the quality of food therefore the quality of food has played important role in the better life expectancy at birth here i am trying to highlight the meat eating habits especially in quantity in general we can see that the meat eating has increased with the development so here we can see that us australia argentina israel brazil new zealand chile canada so all these countries the meat eating is quite higher and so high in case of australia and us this is due to the better status in terms of income or financial status or development so higher the development better is the food and higher is the meat consumption similarly it is also shown in other uh, countries in the right side so with the development with the time the meat eating has increased and therefore it has a role in the human health which we can see in the next one here we can see the correlation between life expectancy and meat eating or child mortality and meat eating 
in the top two lines you can see that the life expectancy has continuously increased when the meat consumption like kg per person per year has increased starting with zero when it goes up to 140 to 160 kg per year so we can see that like life expectancy at birth has increased similarly the bottom curve is showing downwards here it is showing the relation with the child mortality as the meat consumption has increased the child mortality has decreased very low so that's how the importance of meat eating in human health is depicted in this so far i was giving a background about the health and food and relation with the health and food now let us understand a little bit more details about the nutritive value of meat as such this is a very common aspect which is taught all undergraduates or other common people so as i mentioned this particular lecture is for all all the common people and also for the undergraduates so briefly i want to highlight few things about the nutritional strength of meat firstly meat is an important source of nutrient in human diet it contains all kind of important nutrients for human diet particularly protein and lipids so meat protein is rich in essential amino acids so essential amino acids are those which has to be supplied through food to the human being otherwise it will have an impact on the health similarly there are some essential fatty acids those are the fatty acids which comes through fat and it has to be supplied through the food otherwise their deficiency can cause health disorder so these two group are very well rich in meat that's how meat plays a very important role in our diet similarly it is a very valuable source of b complex vitamins especially the ruminant origin meat and other important micro elements or minerals like iron zinc selenium copper manganese especially iron the meat is one of the best sources of iron and as we know the iron deficiency anemia is epidemic in all underdeveloped countries so meat consumption is very important to fulfill the requirement of iron for every age especially the women further biologically the meat is having very high biological value it is because of the high balance or reach in all the essential amino acids so that's how the meat protein is very important similarly other micronutrients which are essential for good health are rich in meat here a little bit more about meat protein in most countries average protein intakes are far below the requirements the requirements are like at least 55 gram per day for men and 45 gram per day for women of which at least 20 gram should be from animal origin why it is from animal origin because these proteins are of high quality these proteins are having best balance of essential amino acids generally they say it is about one gram per kg body weight so whatever it is the foods of animal origin or proteins of animal origin is very important for best maintenance of health of course non-animal origin proteins can be used however it needs perfect balance with many different sources. then only it can really fulfill the requirement of essential amino acids similarly about meat lipids lean meat has similar proportions of saturated fatty acid and mono unsaturated fatty acid so generally blindly it is said that all red meats are high in saturated fatty acid and those are very harmful for health causing the cholesterol and other cardiovascular disease but the fact is nowadays in modern system lean meat is produced wherein the subcutaneous fat the outer fat is trimmed and removed so only muscles are used for meat where very little fat will be there and in those fat saturated fatty acid is less so as such it is not at all harmful further main monounsaturated fatty acid that is the oleic acid is quite high in meat and which is very good for health and about 30 to 40 percent of fat and meat is composed of monounsaturated fatty acids here we can see the 
minerals and vitamins present in meat you can see it in the left side from top to bottom it is the downward in content or concentration and similarly in the right side we can see the vitamins from higher level to lower level so we can see that minerals like potassium phosphorus sodium magnesium are quite rich similarly iron 0.9 mg is quite high and which is very very important for us for preventing anemia or blood cell formation in the right side in vitamins we can see b4 and b3 is quite rich similarly b5 b6 are also quite high these vitamins are very very important and they are available mainly from animal products so this is how the meat plays very important role as source of important vitamins and minerals and all these vitamins and minerals has very very important role in the life process here once again some of the important nutrients are highlighted other than protein i mentioned iron is very very important and meat is the best source similarly magnesium is very good source from the meat omega-3 fatty acid which plays very important role in our health and physiology Choline as a vitamin, zinc plays very important role. It is present in many enzymes and without that those enzymes cannot function. Selenium also important and it acts as antioxidant. Then other vitamins particularly B vitamins, thiamine, B6, niacin, riboflavin, they are also present in good quantity and very important for our health. And these all the nutrients are available in good amount in the meat. Here in this specifically the nutritional value of pork belly is highlighted. I don't want to go much details. We can see that copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, the levels are given in this even zinc, selenium, the omega-3 fatty acid, vitamin E, vitamin D. Nowadays it has become very important during this COVID period because it plays very important role for immunity and all the other B vitamins like B1, B2, B3 b6 b5 they are present in high quantity in pork so far i have spoken the first and second part first part was basics about the life process second part was about the nutritional aspect now the third aspect is about the health benefits of meat i have mentioned about all the nutrients briefly i am going to highlight their function in health in in some specific cases especially it is low in dietary sodium which is good for health it prevents the depression and stress due to the meat in diet prevents anemia and cancer there is a mistake it contains b vitamins and selenium which plays very important role in life process especially b12 which is very important for preventing some kind of anemia as you know pernicious anemia it's a best source of iron and potassium and iron is very important to prevent the anemia high quality protein i have already told in nervous system disorder this in this proteins particularly animal origin plays important role and it is not at all high in cholesterol or saturated fats though it is wrongly uh, propaganda is made and it is rich in omega-3 fatty acid which plays very important role which I am going to talk again separately and also conjugated linoleic acid. So here once again I am going to highlight the important role the meat plays in human health. It can play important role in the heart disease prevention. It improves in mood elevation to create happier mood, sustain energy because the meat fat is a very good source of energy. It can prevent cancer, especially the omega-3 and conjugated linoleic acid. I will talk later. Helps in maintaining the DNA. Immune system support. It's very, very important. High quality protein and some of the minerals plays important role in immunity. It is important for hair, skin and nail. Proper cell function. Essential for brain function. And it can reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. High quality nutrients are very, very important for that so here we can see the benefits of pork earlier i have mentioned the nutrients in pork here it is the role of those nutrients are highlighted i will not go for much details few things i want to highlight <coughs> the vitamin b1 helps in 
building and repair of nervous nerves and muscles maintains appetite release of energy b2 also important in nerve, nervous system and healthy skin and eyes b3 important in allergy energy release or healthy skin b6 energy release and transport of amino acids and helps from niacin b12 as i have already mentioned in anemia and blood cell formation iron very important in anemia protein i have mentioned fat very important for our cellular function especially the cell membrane is very important with the bilayer lipid and other b vitamin like b5 all these are having extremely important biological role and rich in meat here once again trying to highlight the benefits of goat meat which we call jiban in india one of the most favorite meat is goat so few points i wanted to highlight and the meat reduces the risk of inflammation in blood vessels stabilizes the heart beat contain fatty acid to prevent cancer like the omega 3 and the cla the relatively high in protein contains lower saturated fat than beef helps burning the fat and producing energy contains selenium and choline that helps in prevention of cancer prevents anemia promotes hemoglobin due to the high rich source of iron and it is also good for blood circulation so briefly this is uh, to highlight the benefit of goat meat or chicken here to highlight the chicken meat actually species of meat has certain differences like in case of beef some of the minerals are very rich some of the omega 3 fatty acid or especially the conjugated linoleic acid is high in ruminant origin meat whereas in case of chicken the unsaturated fatty acid is higher particularly the polyunsaturated fatty acid which is very good for health so it's a good source of omega 3 fatty acid further it has got the source for other minerals vitamins and which are very important in different biological system it strengthens the bone it helps in weight loss and chicken meat is very easy to digest and quite cheap easily available nowadays everywhere it helps in uh, muscle building or other nutrients for mood elevation etc which we have already discussed earlier now we are at the fourth or the last part of this lecture today so here so far i have told about the basic life process about the nutrients in meat or nutritive value in meat and thirdly about the role of meat in health now this aspect i am going to talk about meat as functional food so functional foods are those having some special health benefits in addition to basic nutritional role so in that sense meat itself is a functional food it is rich in many components which has got very special physiological roles for example omega 3 fatty acid which i am going to talk more details then conjugated linoleic acid it is another fatty acid which has got lot of physiological role and there are many bioactive peptides which has got physiological functions especially they have a role as antioxidants so some of them we are going to discuss in details in the part 2 of this lecture and many other micronutrients especially some of the minerals which are part of many enzymes and plays vital roles so nowadays functional meat products are also prepared in the process of meat production in the animal husbandry sometime they try to feed the animals with important of these nutrients and get the meat enriched with them or in the processing stage we add many of these in the products and make them more functional now let us see about the polyunsaturated fatty acids and health as i mentioned earlier some meat are very rich in polyunsaturated fatty acid especially poultry pork and even fish is one of the best source of pufas now i mentioned earlier that the meat fats are rich in essential fatty acids those are linoleic linolenic and arachidonic these fatty acids must be supplied through food and they have very important biological roles but some of these fatty acids are present as n3 and n6 or we say omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acid they have got very vital role and it is depending on the position of the double bonds in the fatty acid chain now normally in nature the n6 or omega 6 is quite high however the omega 3 or n3 is less 
So intake of omega-3 has to be increased and that is possible by using the fats of animal origin, especially some chicken, pork and fish is very rich. Now whenever we take more of omega-3, that is the long chain polyunsaturated fatty acid, their examples are Ecosa pentaenoic acid or Docosa hexaenoic acid, EPA and DHA, they are commonly used and nowadays they are available in supplements also. Now it has been found that when the intake of long chain PUFA is increased, there has a association with the reduced risk of atherosclerosis, heart attack and cancer. Therefore, the meat as a source of PUFA can play a very important role for reducing these diseases. Similarly, meat makes an important contribution to long chain omega-3 for those who eat little or no oily fish. So that's how the fish or other meat fats plays very important role for supplying the omega-3 that is very much required for better health, especially the cardiovascular health. Here we will see the importance of zinc and selenium. Earlier I have mentioned that zinc and selenium is very good source in meat and plays very important role. Zinc is essential for cell division, growth and tissue repair. It is necessary for reproductive development, immune system and healing of wounds. And meat is a very good source of highly bioavailable zinc. That's how the meat plays a very important role as a source of zinc and this is very important micronutrient. Similarly, selenium acts as an antioxidant. It is necessary for the use of iodine in thyroid hormone production. And it plays very important role in the immunity or immune system function. Again, meat is a very good source of selenium, especially the red meat that is the ruminant origin meat plays very important role. So that's how the meat plays an important role as a functional component that is zinc and selenium. Here we will see the conjugated linoleic acid CLA and its role in human health. I have mentioned earlier, CLA is proven to prevent the cancer by reducing the incidence of cancer, by reducing the progress of cancer and also it can reduce the metastasis. So there are a lot of reports and pro proof that CLA effectively works against the cancer, especially in case of skin tumors, poor stomach tumors, mammary tumors. Similarly, mammary tumor cells, malignant melanoma and colorectal cancer cells, leukemia, prostate carcinoma, ovarian carcinoma. So these are the evidences available in the reports about the role of conjugated linoleic acid against cancer and it has many other functional roles in the human health and the ruminant origin meat or even milk is a very good source of conjugated linoleic acid. Here let us understand the relation of red meat and cardiovascular disease. It is commonly created knowledge to the common public that red meat can cause cardiovascular disorder, which is not really true. Red meat contains saturated fatty acid and high intake of it can cause cardiovascular disease. But the fact I have already mentioned that nowadays the meat is made as lean meat and uh, superficial fat depositions are removed, even the production system is changed in such a way that the fat deposition is reduced or the fatty acid composition is changed. Therefore, red meat is not a threat for cardiovascular disease, especially in lean red meat, the saturated fatty acid is low. Further, red meat contains the other fatty acids, the monounsaturated fatty acids and the omega-3 fatty acid. All these things play a very important role in protecting the cardiovascular health. And other micronutrients I have mentioned, the B vitamins, the selenium also helps in cardiovascular health. And in case of lean meat, if it is consumed, it can be promoted further for healthy diet and cardiovascular disease prevention. Now here let us understand about the role of cholesterol and cardiovascular disease. Commonly it is known to every doctor and every people consumers that 
if we eat red meat it has high cholesterol and it will cause cardiovascular disease but this is not the truth in 2015 american dietary guidelines advisory committee has already recommended that cholesterol is not a matter of concern for over consumption it has been proved that there is no direct relation that dietary cholesterol can increase the serum cholesterol therefore there is no need to restrict the eating of meat or red meat so this is a indigenous or inherent system in our body which produces cholesterol without even eating meat therefore it is a false propaganda to prevent eat meat and thereby we are getting deprived of many important functional components and nutrients for health here we will discuss about the relation of red meat and cancer especially the colorectal cancer so it is commonly made into a understanding that if you take red meat you may have colorectal cancer but it is not really true and most of the evidence of the association between red meat and colorectal cancer shows an increase in risk of it in the highest consumers compared to the lowest consumers although most studies have not reached statistical significance so here i am trying to say that it is only a risk for those who take a very high amount say daily they are taking meat or red meat and this is on at least 500 g average per day in such case only risk so there is no need to have a red meat rather we need to reduce the quantum or frequency so moderation is very important we can take moderate amount of red meat along with fruits and vegetables there is absolutely no risk and regarding processed meat nowadays there is some alarm particularly the cured meat where nitrites are used but again the level of nitrite is very very safe and moreover if we reduce the quantity and the frequency then that risk can be avoided here just briefly i want to compare with the foods of animal origin and foods of plant origin though i have no intention to Uh, really put it down that animal origin uh, food or plant origin food neither i am making any propaganda against the vegetarian food here just scientifically there is a new understanding that is the digestible indispensable amino acid score this is the score used to compare the quality of protein and based on that we can see that all the foods of animal origin has got very high quality protein or amino acid and the second medium quality is all the pulses and lentils we have and the poor quality is all the cereals and nuts this is the scientific fact of course vegetarian diet is quite good and enough to supply all the nutrients or essential amino acids only thing it requires perfect balancing multiple uh, ingredients are required which i am going to talk again in the next so here i was mentioning that foods of plant origin they are not sufficient in any many of the essential amino acids so they need combination so good number of combination of vegetarian items are required to fulfill the requirements so here this comparison shows that to get 54 g protein three different things are required whereas in case of non vegetarian any one is enough but to fulfill that requirement sometime the we need to consume more energy anyway the vegetarian food is also okay but it needs perfect balancing with multiple ingredients then only some of the essential amino acids requirement can be fulfilled here we are at the end of today's lecture some of the more details and much deeper aspect like bioactive peptides and antioxidants meat as functional food in more details i am going to discuss in the second part so here is the conclusion and take home message from today's lecture <coughs> meat is extremely rich in nutrients which plays essential physiological function though many studies showing the adverse impact of eating red meat but many of them having one or the other biasness processing like curing smoking barbecuing are the major reason for producing harmful components hence minimal processing should be practiced triglycerides cholesterol in meat is often reported to be harmful however such effect can be avoided by reducing their quantum and also including sufficient vegetables and fruits in the diet 
So moderation is important to avoid harmful effects of meat. However, the per capita consumption of meat in India is so low that it is not of concern. So meat as such is not at all harmful. It is very important, but it should be taken in moderation. Too much of anything is not good and it should be combined with other food items, especially fruits and vegetables. Thank you. Please wait for the part two of this series.